Okay, so I think that uh, we, we can start uh, the afternoon session. The, our second speaker today is uh, Yuli Leshenko <coughs> from the National Research University Higher School of Economy, in the Independent University of Moscow. Please. Thanks. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to speak in this conference uh, with so many friends and colleagues participating. It's a great pity that the COVID disaster um, prevent our direct uh, communications. But uh, let us use the opportunity that we have. Uh, the <clears throat> talk will be divided in three parts uh, according to the title, but they will be ordered in a different way I will start with the identical cycles at infinity, uh, then continue with simultaneous uniformization, and then pass uh, to persistence uh, problems. Uh, so I start with several uh, major problems. Uh, the first one uh, asks, given an analytic family of Riemann surfaces, does there exist a uniformization of these surfaces that depends analytically on the parameter of the family? This is a simultaneous uniformization problem, which has many sections, many branches, and I will speak about this in my talk. Next problem is, <clears throat> given an analytic family of differential equations, do the geometric features of the face portrait persist when the parameter changes? Next, in particular, does a holonomy map of a complex cross-section to itself admit an unbounded analytic continuation for generic planar polynomial foliation? All these problems require detailed uh, elaboration, uh, detailed definitions that I will give later. Uh, another problem goes back uh, to Anosov. Uh, it is stated in form of a conjecture. Uh, consider a polynomial planar foliation. Uh, the conjecture states that all the leaves of a generic planar polynomial foliation, except for a countable set, are simply connected. And the leaves from this countable set are topological cylinders. Something is known about uh, this conjecture. I will uh, say it later. Uh, a few words about history. An attempt to solve problem two and a particular uh, state and the statement of a particular of this problem in the particular case goes back to Petrovsky and Landis in the 50s. Uh, in the early 60s, I found a mistake in their proofs, and since then, problem two is one of my tar targets. Problems one and two are closely related. Uh, I will explain this below. Now, let us start with identical cycles, uh, a dream about Anosov's problem. It is well known that generic planar polynomial foliations have exactly a countable number of limit cycles. So this is uh, a result partly going back to Petrovsky partly to my uh, paper of uh, 78. Uh, in any case, this part about limit cycles is known. We do not know whether uh, the leaves that carry the limit cycles are topological cylinders, uh, not at all. We say nothing about uh, their topology except for the statement that they are not simply connected. So how <clears throat> another leaves might be not simply connected? Uh, the answer is uh, these leaves bring uh, complex cycles 
But these cycles are not limit cycles. They are with holonomy identity. They are called identical cycles. Identical cycles uh, very well exist. For instance, when you consider a polynomial vector field on the real plane with, the, with a center, <clears throat> then the center is surrounded by identical cycles, real cycles, real closed curves being extended to the complex domain form complex identical cycles. But uh, real centers may be easily destroyed by a rotation of a vector field. So suppose that we have an analogous situation in the complex uh, plane. Mm, we have uh, a complex cycle, a uh, non-contractible closed curve on the Riemann surface. Uh, all the Riemann surfaces nearby have a close non-contractible uh, real curve. And the question is, can we destroy this picture in the complex domain by perturbing the system in the space of the polynomial equations of the same degree? The question stays widely open. So summarizing, we have to prove that generic planar polynomial correlations have no identical complex cycles. That is, we have to prove that we can destroy uh, identical cycles, but with a perturbation uh, with very restricted possibilities. We can perturb the vector field only uh, in the space of polynomial vector fields of the same degree. So there is a dream how to prove that generic polynomial vector field has no uh, identical cycles. Suppose, uh, on the contrary, that a generic planar polynomial correlation of degree n has an identical cycle. So there is a cycle that we cannot destroy. Such a foliation uh, has a compact leaf, the invariant light at infinity. This line brings n plus one singular points, n is the degree of the foliation. The line with the singular points deleted is called the infinite leaf. <coughs> its fundamental group is free with n generators. Uh, so back to our foliation, it has an identical cycle somewhere distant from the infinite leaf. Now we make a conjecture uh, about which I have no idea how to justify it. Suppose that the identical cycle may be extended to infinity. That is, uh, there is a continuous family of identical cycles um, on the leaves, and this family touches the infinite line, and the result of this extension may, is a probably very complicated element of the fundamental group of the infinite leaf. So this is uh, uh, the most fantastic uh, part of this dream. And now we pass uh, to <coughs> uh, the identical cycles at infinity. Uh, and at this point, uh, this is a theorem that I will state. Uh, denote by phi infinity of F, uh, F calligraphic is uh, the, poly, the polynomial foliation, and phi infinity of F is the infinite leap of this foliation. Uh, any element uh, of the fundamental group 
is a cycle of the foliation F just by definition, this is a real loop non-contractable on the leaf. Uh, this cycle may be either identical or a limit cycle for F. If this cycle is a limit for a family, for a continuous family of identical cycles, then it is identical. But the theorem stated here uh, claims that for a generic foliation F, the cycle gamma is not identical for this foliation. Uh, so some part of my talk will be dedicated uh, to a very brief outline of uh, not how the theorem is proved, but what are the main ideas uh, to approach the proof. So let us look uh, what we do have. Um, we have a monodromic group at infinity that is uh, to any, uh, let us take, uh, let us choose generators of the fundamental group to any generator of the fundamental group corresponds a germ of a map C0 to C0. Uh, let us define by GN0 uh, uh, the group of germs of no matter what origin with N generators and linear part the identity. Zero uh, shows that the linear part is the identity. Now, in this very rich uh, group, uh, 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 so the n small uh, shows that we take n uh, uh, that uh, we take this group with n generators. Uh, so the monodromy group is such a group with n generators, but the monodromy group at infinity corresponds uh, to polynomial foliations and amidst all the germs uh, of uh, the conformal maps. Uh, it is a very uh, thin, very uh, shy uh, monodromy group subset. Uh, MN is uh, the analytic continuation of the set of germs of the polynomial map uh, corresponding to chosen generators of the fundamental group of the infinite uh, solution. Now, uh, the subset uh, of the monodromy group subset is very highly transcendental. And uh, we will prove that its algebraic closure is much, much larger. For now, let us define this algebraic closure by AN. Uh, let us truncate the germs to jets and uh, j and zero and small uh, will be the multi-jet space. The elements of this space are the tuples of n jets of the germs C0 to C0 with the linear part of the identity. Uh, suppose that there exists a totally identical cycle uh, in uh, the fundamental group of the infinite leaf. Uh, then the monodromy map of this cycle is identity, but it is uh, generated uh, by the germs of maps C0 to C0 corresponding to uh, the generators of the fundamental group. These J germs are G1 and so on Gn. And some composition of these germs is identity as written in the equality N1. Uh, and this equality holds identically for all the monodromy groups uh, at infinity. Uh, let us consider all the germs in Gn 
that satisfy this relation. I will skip uh, zero uh, and write uh, G and write all the notations without zero, meaning that zero is present and all the linear parts are identity. Um, so the space of all the multi-jets uh, in GN that satisfy this relation is the relation manifold Rn. Uh, the large space Rn is algebraic and its subset Mn is highly transcendental. Um, so uh, we uh, uh, now work in space of jets instead of germs for some n large. Let us look at the dimensions. The dimension of the uh, monodromy set is about n small square, the dimension, the space of parameters of mm, polynomial vector fields of degree n. Uh, it does not depend on the n large order of the jet. The dimension of the space of jets, multi-jets, is uh, like uh, it is uh, written, this one, uh, the dimension of uh, the uh, relation manifold is approximately by n large uh, smaller plus probably some constant. So consider the algebraic closure of the uh, monodromy set in the jet space. Uh, it belongs to the truncated relation uh, manifold, but what is our goal, which is uh, by far not yet achieved, uh, is to prove that the dimension of the algebraic closure of the monodromy set uh, is larger than the dimension of the relation space. And this will give uh, a contradiction. In order to uh, clarify uh, the idea, consider the following example. Uh, consider the graph of the function log as a curve in uh, the complex plane. Let us prove that its algebraic closure is the complex plane itself. Indeed, the function log together with any value w, w takes values w plus 2pik. Hence, uh, the algebraic closure of this graph has a countable intersection with a vertical line, z equal constant. An algebraic curve intersects an algebraic surface, C2, um, at a countable number of points. It may happen only if uh, the curve entirely uh, belongs uh, to the surface. So, uh, the algebraic closure of our graph contains all vertical lines z equal constant. It is closed. Hence, it is in fact the whole of c square. Uh, so, in what follows, we will construct algebraic curves uh, that intersect the monodromy set at a countable number of points. And uh, uh, as they intersect the algebraic closure of the monodromy set at a countable number of points, these curves belong entirely to uh, this algebraic closure. In order to construct this countable number of points, let us look how the braid group acts on the jet space. Um, the uh, picture shows 
how the braid group acts on the fundamental group. We take one element of the braid group, uh, the points that move uh, are singular points of uh, our equation, um, n plus one points. I take only two of them, a1 and a2, and make them move. All the other points uh, are fixed. Mm. The second uh, point out of these two also does not move. Only the first one moves. It moves uh, along the dashed line, the dashed loop on this picture. And uh, uh, the generators of the fundamental group change continuously in such a way uh, that uh, they remain the generators of the uh, fundamental group with uh, the new set of points deleted. If you carefully look uh, on how it happens, you will see that the generators of the fundamental group will be uh, like it is shown here. This is new gamma two, and this is new gamma one. Uh, another step in the uh, careful exam of this uh, picture is uh, uh, that uh, both new loops are obtained from the old one by uh, a conjugacy with some element of the uh, group. Uh, the loops A gamma one and gamma two come uh, to the loop, sorry, here I will have gamma not G, uh, come to this loop. And uh, we can apply this operation as much as many times as we wish. Um, this is an operation that brings the loops to new loops and the corresponding germs uh, to new germs. UJ are the germs of the monodromy transformation that uh, correspond uh, to gamma J. Now J is uh, one or two but um, we can generalize uh, the situation later. Uh, so we take a countable number of uh, points, like the values of the logarithm Z, these points belong to a rational curve. It should be proved, but this is true. Uh, this rational curve intersects the algebraic extension of the monodromy map, um, the algebraic closure of the monodromy map at a countable number of points. And therefore, this uh, rational curve belongs uh, to the uh, algebraic closure. As it is rational, it admits a tangent vector field. Hence, any point. Uh, at any point uh, u of the monodromy uh, manifold, there is a vector uh, wj of u, as well as uh, at any point uh, of the algebraic closure. And these vector fields are tangent uh, to uh, the algebraic closure. And there is a Lie algebra generated by these vector fields uh, tangent to this algebraic closure. And now we have only uh, the generators of this Lie algebra, the vector fields uh, tangent uh, to the rational curves. And uh, a non-easy computation shows that their commutators generate uh, a very large Lie algebra 
whose dimension is greater than the dimension of the relation manifold. And this is uh, the actual contradiction. So at this point, I end up uh, with the uh, identical cycles at infinity with the of conjecture and a switch uh, to another problem uh, stated at the beginning. Um, given an analytic family of Riemann surfaces, does there exist uh, a simultaneous uniformization that is uh, the uniformization of their analytic covers that depends analytically on the on the parameter of the field. Uh, so some definitions are necessary. Uh, here I show the picture that shows what the uniformization is. Everybody knows mm, this is uh, uh, the map of the universal cover over the Riemann surface to the unit disk if the surface is of hyperbolic type. And now let us uh, discuss uh, what it may be uh, for a family of uh, Riemann surfaces. Uh, on the picture, uh, Riemann surf family of Riemann surfaces is shown here. And we suppose uh, for a moment that uh, there is a, a family of unit disks, any one um, uniformizes the Riemann surface of the family and they are all parameterized by the same point of the base, say the base is also a complex disk. Mm, is it possible to find a uniformizing map of this Cartesian product delta uh, to project these map, these uh, disks holomorphically in both variables uh, to the, uh, to the uh, family of Riemann surfaces? Uh, this is possible. Uh, if and only if uh, when the family of Riemann surfaces is trivial, all the surfaces are conformally equivalent to each other. But uh, in the families of Riemann surfaces, very often uh, surfaces not conformally equivalent to each other occur. Uh, so, uh, we should not expect that uh, a simultaneous uniformization to the unit disk is possible. The uh, target of the simultaneous uniformization should be a set of topological disks that vary with the parameter, so-called canonical skew cylinder set of the domains uh, in the Riemann uh, spheres parameterized by uh, some base of the parameters. And the uniformization is the biholomorphic map of this canonical skew cylinder, the biholomorphic projection, to the family of the Riemann surfaces such that uh, restriction to any fiber is the corresponding universal cover. This is one uh, possibility to define uh, simultaneous uniformization when you take the projection of the canonical skew cylinder uh, to the, uh, to the uh, Riemann surfaces of the family. Um, another definition um, will be uh, related with the map of universal covers to the canonical skew cylinders. Uh, I will explain this uh, a little bit later. Uh, now I repeat 
uh, I replace the pictures with words. Definition, a canonical skew cylinder is a triple, a domain in the product of the Riemann sphere by the base uh, B, with the projection of this domain uh, to be along the first uh, factor. And the fibers of this projection are topological disks. Uh, the family of analytic curves is a projection of a, a total space uh, M uh, to the base Phi is a holomorphic projection and uh, Phi is, uh, has a constantly rank uh, one, M is of dimension two, B is of dimension one. This is a one parameter uh, family of analytic curves. Uh, we may increase the number of parameters, but let us think that B is of dimension one. So a map uh, of the canonical skew cylinder to our family is uh, a simultaneous uniformization of this family, provided that uh, the projection in the family and the projection of uh, the uh, canonical skew cylinder are respected by F like this, and uh, the, the map uh, phi is uh, the universal cover the domain of the skew cylinder to the uh, Riemann surface. So this is the formalization of the previous picture. Um, so simultaneous uniformization is a term uh, introduced by Lippmann Burrs in 60. Mm, he introduced it in the context of the uniformization of uh, Riemann surfaces uh, of the same topology. Uh, and uh, the following theorem uh, holds. Simultaneous uniformization exists if all the fibers of the family are Riemann surfaces of finite type, homeomorphic to each other, and the base B is simply connected. In different contexts, this was proved by Burns and Griffiths in 60 and 72. So let me uh, make a step uh, back. Uh, this simultaneous uniformization theorem is a uh, a result uh, of a very powerful uh, theory uh, of quasi-conformal mappings uh, and of the Hewler uh, space. Uh, and it was uh, a great success uh, of the uh, theory in that time. Now, what about simultaneous uniformization of uh, algebraic curves with varying topology. Uh, so uh, recently together with uh, George Shabbat, we proved a theorem which is not yet uh, published and even not yet completely written though almost written. Uh, and uh, this theorem claims that simultaneous uniformization exists if the base is of dimension one and simply connected, all the fibers of the family except for one uh, denoted by S zero are homeomorphic to each other. And the fiber S zero has but one uh, singularity, one uh, simple cross. So, um, let us connect uh, these results uh, with differential equations. Consider a Hamiltonian uh, system in the plane like this with the Hamiltonian function, a polynomial of degree n plus one. Then this is a polynomial vector field of degree n. Its phase curves 
are uh, Riemann surfaces uh, with the total space C square and the base C and the map H instead of pi in C square to C. Uh, what subfamilies of this family admit a simultaneous uniformization? So we have a polynomial in C2, a family of its level curves. And uh, the question is, uh, what basis, what subsets of C we can choose in such a way that the corresponding families will admit uh, the simultaneous uniformization? The answer is shown on the picture. Here is our family. This is C2. This is the map. It is denoted by F here. Mm, it should be better H to C. And uh, shadowed are uh, the possible bases. Um, the uh, cro small crosses um, denote critical values of the polynomial. Uh, fibers with uh, self-crossings or other singularities uh, correspond to these values. So first of all, let us take the base one, uh, which is a disk of non-critical values. The base two is a disk with exactly Sorry, uh, this is disk one of non-critical values. Disk two with one critical value at the center. And the base three is the whole C. So is it a simultaneous uniformization for the families with the distinguished bases possible? For bases one and two, it is possible. And uh, the question whether it is possible in case three is uh, widely open. It's very strange, it sounds classical, but uh, no answer to this uh, question. Um, now we pass uh, to another uh, view uh, on the simultaneous uniformization. Uh, we pass uh, to covering manifolds. That is, uh, uh, we uh, take uh, the foliation, even uh, the uh, family of base curves of a real differential equation. Uh, we take a cross section which plays the role of the base. And uh, for any point of the cross section, we take the universal cover over the fiber with this base point. So uh, one and the same fiber corresponds to a countable number of universal covers because it intersects the cross section at a countable number of points. But when we take the union of universal covers, the universal cover manifold is uh, topologically very simple. Now, an analogous construction uh, in the complex plane leads uh, to a complex manifold space of universal covers over the phase curves of polynomial vector fields. And uh, together with Arseny Sherbakov, we proved that if the base is a Stein uh, manifold, say a disk, then the uh, manifold of universal covers is a Stein manifold too. Now, uh, theory of uh, Stein manifolds uh, uh, may be used. Uh, Kirby distortion theorem is helpful. And uh, the previous result implies the reduction of the simultaneous uniformization problem for families of curves with the total space uh, Stein manifolds to the uniformization problem of holomorphic family of analytic curves. So 
if uh, holomorphic families, if any holomorphic family of algebraic curves is uniformizable, then any family of analytic curves with the same total space is uniformizable. And as a consequence, uh, all the universal covers over the leaves of complex foliations will be simultaneously uniformized. But unfortunately, Glutzuk in 99 discovered that there exists non-uniformizable holomorphic family of analytic curves with the Stein total space. And as a corollary, we conclude that there exists a non-uniformizable holomorphic family of algebraic curves. So I started with the classical results that claimed that um, the simultaneous uniformization in some cases of families of algebraic curves exists. Now I claim that in general it does not exist. And the natural question is, uh, where is the boundary between uniformizable and non-uniformizable families of algebraic curves? Now let us switch uh, to the uh, third part um, of uh, my talk, uh, to persistence of geometric objects related to complex polynomial foliation. A uh, theorem proved uh, in 06 uh, claims that simultaneous uniformization with some after requirements of the families of phase curves of some class of differential equations implies persistence of limit cycles and Poincare maps, whatever it means, for the equations of this class. So it is not a rigorous statement of the theorem, just uh, the idea of what happens. Uh, for instance, uh, what uh, does it mean persistence of the Poincare uh, holonomy uh, map? Uh, consider two cross sections shown on the picture as uh, two planes. This is a, a realistic picture. Mm, these are domains on the complex lines. Everything is in C2. Um, these uh, are real curves that in fact belong uh, to complex leaves. This is a piece of the complex leaf uh, passing from one cross section to another. If we have a continuous family of such curves, we say uh, that we have a holonomy map. In particular, the source and target uh, cross sections may coincide, but the curves should uh, form some arcs that connect uh, points of the same cross section uh, to other points of this cross section. Uh, so, uh, suppose uh, that we have uh, a disk in the uh, source uh, cross section. Um, and suppose that we have a domain in the target and we cannot extend holomorphically this map across any point of the disk. Uh, this is shown on the picture symbolically. Uh, this picture shows, therefore, non-persistent persistence of the Poincaré holonomy map. And uh, one of the forms of the persistence of the Poincaré map uh, is uh, that this picture is forbidden. Um, so we always can extend the holonomy map across a boundary of any uh, disk in its domain. Uh, this is one of the weak persistence uh, properties. So um, in uh, 05, I stated this conjecture in uh, Lyon 
And Bertrand de Rouen soon um, suggested a counterexample. There exists a polynomial vector field in C2 with a Poincare map defined in a disk that cannot be extended through any point of the boundary of this disk. Uh, it was published uh, in a paper by the Rouen and co-authors in the year 13. But this is not a generic uh, map, uh, not a generic foliation. Uh, the conjecture not written here is that for generic polynomial foliation, this picture is forbidden. And uh, uh, in the Derouin counter, counter example, the polynomial foliation is very specific. So uh, it, the effect may be destroyed by a small perturbation. And uh, this example does not contradict to the relation between simultaneous uniformization and persistence because uh, extra requirements from the theorem that um, derives the persistence from uniformization, uh, the requirements of this theorem are violated. But uh, I wanted to show you this uh, counterexample. Uh, another counterexample uh, following uh, the same authors and the same uh, paper is uh, uh, again uh, very interesting. Mm, the uh, theorem claimed in the bottom of uh, this uh, screen uh, is not exactly borrowed from uh, the uh, paper that I quoted, uh, but it follows from the methods that were developed uh, in this paper. Uh, so uh, consider uh, a polynomial uh, vector field, uh, which is uh, uh, rather uh, specific and uh, belongs to a rather simple subclass. Consider the space of all Riccati equations with meromorphic coefficients. These meromorphic coefficients has four poles on the Riemann sphere. Uh, the leaves of this foliations, foliation are graphs of multivalued function, uh, functions with the same domain, the Riemann sphere with four punctures, and its monodromic group consists of Möbius transformations. Now let us uh, construct a dramatic holonomy, I should say. Consider two lines in C2, one vertical transversal to the foliation, I um, stress that uh, the vertical lines uh, through the poles of the coefficients are leaves of the foliations of, of the foliation. Uh, so consider a vertical line different from this leaf, which is transversal to the foliation. Another line is horizontal. The first line is a source, the second one is a target. Uh, Consider uh, their intersection point and consider the uh, uh, leaf, uh, the flow box uh, of the uh, leaves in uh, a neighborhood of this uh, point. We suppose uh, that both lines uh, at their intersection are transversal uh, to the phase curves. And therefore, there is a germ psi uh, by holomorphic germ of a holonomy map from the uh, first to the second line uh, near their intersection point. It seems that uh, this uh, holonomy map brings uh, no surprises, yet a very surprising theorem holds uh, for an open set of the Riccati foliations, the analytic extension of the germ psi has an open set of singular points on the Riemann sphere. So 
it is a um, sort of an anti-persistence uh, result uh, related to this uh, elementary example. Uh, but uh, the conjecture about the persistence of the holonomy map forbids uh, such an example because in the conjecture, the source and the target do coincide. I will show this conjecture later. So we pass uh, to the last uh, part to the conjectures. Uh, the first conjecture, generic foliation by level curves of a polynomial in two variables admits simultaneous uniformization. So there was a picture uh, where I said that uh, the existence of the simultaneous uniformization is a vastly open problem. I think that the answer uh, in this problem is positive uh, because C2 is uh, too narrow uh, to have uh, pathologies in the simultaneous uniformization. But um, I am not 100% uh, sure that uh, this conjecture is true, say 60% sure. Next conjecture, complex phase curves of a generic polynomial vector field in the complex plane admits simultaneous uniformization. Now, persistence problem. Complex limit cycles of a polynomial vector field of given, given degree uh, in the complex plane admit an analytic continuation along a generic curve in the parameter space. So you take an arbitrary curve and uh, probably you cannot extend the complex limit cycle along this curve, but you can take an arbitrary small perturbation of this curve and uh, the extension of the complex limit cycle along this curve will be already possible. Next conjecture is related mm, with the uh, last counterexamples uh, discussed Poincaré map of a cross-section gamma onto itself for a generic polynomial vector field of given degree in the complex plane has the persistence property. For any curve in gamma, there exists an arbitrary closed curve along which the, curve, the uh, map may be analytically extended. So this is uh, the uh, the persistence uh, property. All these conjectures are uh, open problems. Uh, as you have seen, simultaneous uniformization is uh, clo closely related uh, to persistence. And I wanted uh, to show you these problems and uh, these relations because I think that these are uh, problems uh, good for the future investigations. Thank you very much for your attention. So do you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Questions, so, please. Uh, for the first part of your uh, your talk, you considered mm -hmm. the, the group of germs of the pheomorphism, but you didn't mention nothing about the germs of the pheomorphism coming from the foliation, from the line at infinity, because there there is less parameters. So uh, the, the group of germs of the pheomorphism coming from foliations of degree D will be a small part of your, uh, your I think, I, A0 and, and so on. Uh. I mentioned this. I said that the dimension of the monodromy set M uh, in the jet space of 
any order n large does not depend on n large and is about square of n small the degree of the foliation. So if you have a cubic foliation, you have, uh, say, a manifold of dimension close to nine. And uh, in the jet space, uh, you have uh, the uh, set of parameters, the dimension of the uh, jet space uh, tends to infinity as the order of the jet tends to infinity. The uh, paradoxical issue is that uh, you take highly transcendental monodromy set, saturate it by the algebraic curves that do belong uh, to the algebraic closure of the monodromy set, uh, get uh, tangent vector fields uh, that generate a Lie algebra. And uh, these vector fields are uh, so badly commuting that taking their commutators, commutators with commutators, and so on, you can increase uh, the dimension of the Lie algebra as much that it should, uh, say, absorb the dimension of the uh, multi-jet space. So roughly speaking, this is uh, the scheme. Thank you. Other questions? I have a question about the, the Anosov problem, that's to say the first problem uh, that you mentioned in your talk. Uh, yes. I understand that if you have a cycle uh, on a foliation, in a foliation, it might, on, in some leaf, you, it, can, it can be difficult to imagine how to project uh, on a cycle on the line at infinity, but what about the case when you are uh, near a Hamiltonian foliation? So, just perturbative case. Um, uh, this is a, a good question, uh, which is not yet investigated. Uh, so, I will uh, probably uh, formalize uh, it in the following way. Um, suppose that arbitrarily close uh, to a Hamiltonian foliation, we have a uh, non-Hamiltonian foliation with the identical cycle. Uh, is it correct that this sequence of identical cycles accumulate uh, to uh, some cycle on the Hamiltonian foliation? Uh, I do not uh, know um, the answer whether it is true. And it is very similar uh, to the dream uh, that I described. So infinite line in the level or uh, Hamiltonian, sorry, infinite line in the limit or a Hamiltonian foliation in the limit. These are very similar objects. And I think that both dreams are equally difficult uh, to prove. Thank you. Other questions? So let us thank 